crowd is a mysterious thing. It can build you up just when the muscles are about to tire and give way. It's been responsible for gold medals and new records here at the Commonwealth Games. Patriotism has the same effect and there has been no clearer example of these Commonwealth Games than the Australian swimming team. 5.10. Matt Bettis is New Zealand junior record. Away. Curry. She gained about a half a metre's break on Van Wodem into the water. She was going in there, swinging those arms. It's rip and tear for Curry and Van Wordham. Woodcock is next. Popham Street swimming, swimming strongly. So is Nugent. But it's Curry and Van Wordham, the two Aussies. They're having a real fight. It's Curry and Van Wordham. Curry's in front. Curry's going to win. Yes, Curry. 25-8. It's a record. Look at Lisa. It's a Commonwealth record. That was an inspired effort in one of four gold medals picked up by the 27-year-old Queensland mum. But the most dominant force in the pool was to be a shy 15-year-old girl from Brisbane. 79-year-old coach Joe King described Hayley Lewis as a little girl with a Rolls-Royce motor. And boy, did she motor for a personal gold medal tally of five. Hayley Lewis out to equal the all-time record of medals. She's going for number five here. She's in front in lane four. The big challenge is coming from the Australian Morris in lane six. And the game's record comes up at 2.11.29. She should be well inside that, I would think. Kate has gone to third, Morris to second, Redford's fourth, Scarborough's fifth. 136.65, Hayley going brilliantly. I don't see how they can catch her. Hayley Lewis is on her way home with more gold for Australia and five personal medals for herself. It's uh, Morris in lane six who won't give in. It's Joe King's two little mighty girls coming down the pool with Hayley leading out by about three quarters of a body length. Oh, she's getting very tired. She's getting very tired. Morris is coming at her. They've got 10 to go. Giant strokes by Morris. Lewis in front. She's going to do it. She's done it. She's broken the game's record of Michelle Forge. That was a great effort. First and second there, the two Australians. Hayley got tired, and then she seemed to get a second win. Oh, about 15 out. boy, oh, boy. What a moment. Five gold medals for the princess of the pool. Another tiny frame was to bring the roof down at the Henderson pool. Glenn Houseman put behind the disappointment of missing out on a world record in the 1500 metres only weeks earlier because of an electronic timing fault to win the goal. Four laps to go. Can he do it? Can he do it? Houseman's rolling up his sleeves now. Ray, I saw him swim 50 and declared him straight away. That's how good I think he is. I've never seen a swimmer as good as this, anybody. And I've been watching them all for 30 years, the great ones. You name them, I've watched them. I've watched Salnikov. He's better than Salnikov, and he'll prove this right now. If he doesn't do it today, it might be only by a tick of a second. He'll bolt him in one of in night. Like, how could you beat him? Look at the Australians. They're telling him to go. We want 13, 55, 3, 2, and then 100 to go. Perkins, an amazing swim. Forget that parallax error in this pool. Perkins is a fair way behind. He's coming up. 120 metres to swim. Look at that world record. Look at his time. Ray, I'll give this time, and I think this deserves a full broadcast for the last 100. And listen to the crowd. Round he goes. 13.56. He's just outside of Kenny Dillard. Glenn Houseman, he has to pick up the tempo. He has to pick up the tempo for the last 100. But he's the only man in the world who probably can, and he has. He's increased his kick. He's increased his kick. Healthman, can he break the world record officially? Stephen Holland's Commonwealth record will be shattered. He's on his way home. Healthman is coming home. You're looking for 14.54.76. You're looking for 14.54.76. On your screen, it's there. He's got less than 15 metres to swim. I don't know that he can do it. I don't think he's going to make it. Or is he? Or is he? Just a 
outside. Oh, well, what a shame, but what a swim. That great moment on the last day of a super swim meet in which Australia bagged a record 21 gold medals. This is how the green and gold got there. Foster in three, failed at four, Waddell in five, Waddell beat him in uh, Adelaide, Renshaw six, Sanders seven, Hick Hicken in eight, failed it, failed it at Waddell, failed it at Waddell, failed it's got him, failed it's got him, it's a goal, it's a goal for Andrew Bailden. <laughs>
Now here's Russell Butler, the overnight leader. Two and a half Ooh. pike and a ripper. My goodness, he's diving well. In the diving, the Aussies put their best toes forward, winning three gold medals. Russell Butler, in the one metre springboard, was the first to strike. This dive will either win it for him or cost him the gold. Let's see what he can do. It's a good takeoff. Done it well. Oh, ripper. Done it well. What a beauty. We got a good takeoff. Once he landed on the end of the board, it was plain sailing. Watch how high he gets. What a great finish. That will get him the gold, Don. That is superb. Well, he's as pleased as punch. He's taken it straight up. Look at that. Double kick out and a... What a finish. Look at it. Hardly any splash like a forward dive pike. And, of course, he's got his cheer squad, his family up in the crowd right alongside. Seven and a half. That'll only have a minor seven. influence on the judges, seven. but they're going to score that seven well. 63.9, one dive seven. to go. He's already got seven. a nine-point lead. 63.9, so, Oh, goodness. It well, looks like a gold baby coming I think that's going to give him about a 13-point lead now. He's actually increased it on that round. Now Russell here's the big Butler, one from Australia. Australia. Everybody in Australia is holding onto their chairs at home. This has got to be a good one. Come on, Russ. I'd like to see him do one worth seven. Really only requires fives to win the competition, but let's see him go for a good one. Come well, on, that Russell. That way he'll put it within it without doubt. He's dived superbly yesterday and today. Confident he's, comment from the coach. He thoroughly deserves it. Let's see him finish on a good one just to prove that he can do it with everybody else. Good top. That's you, going he's to do done it. it. Oh, Fantastic. Picked it in one, Steve. That he is a gold medal around. dive. Back two and a half. That would be considered, I would think, the hardest dive on one metre because you haven't got a running takeoff to get the power. Look at it. He's finished up just like a back dive. That's going to get seven and a half, possibly eight. He's going to win by the proverbial mile. Craig Rogerson showed his class. A gold medalist at the 86 Commonwealth Games, he was still in a class of his own four years later in the three metre springboard. I believe he's only got to get scores of six and a halves, possibly only sixes to win the competition on his final two dives. But I bet you also he's going to get much more for this dive. He's one of the best twisting divers we've ever had in Australia. Oh, look at the height. Oh, fabulous. He's just rolled the heels a little bit, but the top of that dive is so good, potentially a 10 dive at the top but he's just thrown it over. That'll disappoint the judges a little bit, but he's still going to get high scores from the judges. He's finished it up at the three metre level. That's unheard of. He's not a tall diver, but look, he's got the dive finished Six oh so and early, half. and seven the heels and have half. rolled over just Six a whisker at the end. Seven. So seven and a half, three seven and a half, 58.8. That's okay, half. but remember, he's got a 20 point lead. Zero. For anyone to catch him, they're going to have to get 78. David and here it is. This is the gold medal dive. Position. Craig Rogerson from Australia, a reverse one and a half with three and a half twists, 3.3. It's an extremely hard dive. He needs to score about six from the judges. Come on, Craig. Oh, he's flipped off the end of the board, but he's got complete control. He knew exactly what he was doing. He wasn't going for the big eight or nine dive. He was just making sure of that vertical entry at the end. Skipped off the board a little bit, three and a half twists. It's a mean dive to do, vertical entry. He will only score six and a halves and sevens, but 3.3 difficulty factor, he's going to get heaps of points. Seven there it is, sevens, 7.5, 69.30. Seven. Seven. They can't seven. catch him, it's impossible. Seven. There's the gold medal Six winner for the men's three metre. At the 1954 zero. Commonwealth Games, Barbara Donnett won the three metre gold. Now daughter Jenny had her sights set on the same achievement. Two good entries on the next two dives should secure her the gold medal. First of them, and let's sit back and watch, backward two and a half somersaults in the tucked position. Feet need to be kicked directly at the end of the board at the finish of the somersault. Oh, she's done it. Great job. That's going to score six and a half, sevens, maybe even higher. So that's one of the risky dives down, out of the way. She should score in the high 50s for this dive. One, two, kick the feet out right, and a nice vertical entry. She's done a somersault under to make the entry look better. Oh, lovely tuck position, knees together. Seven. Beautifully seven done. Six and a half. Let's pick up the scores seven from the judges. Six and a half, seven. up to seven, seven. and a half, 58.8. And a half. That's certainly Eight. going to put pressures Eight. on the other Zero. competitors. Degree of difficulty, 2.8. Now the leader, this is the dive that will really be the gold medal dive. This is normally a difficult dive for the women, but Jenny's just so strong, she'll have to jump up, keep it close, spin two and a half somersaults towards the board, 
but the important thing, all important on this dive, is a vertical entry. I don't even think the splash matters here. Very important that she gets a vertical entry. She's done it. That's the gold medal to Australia. Jenny Donnett clenching her fists underwater. No way that anyone can beat her there. She's delighted with that. She knows she's got the gold medal back. Let's have a look at it. Double somersault. She hasn't wimped out. Kept it close to the board. That's a seven dive or higher. Beautiful dive. She needed about 40 points. There's a seven picture a of half. three gold seven. medals between Six, those two ladies. Seven her mother winning in 54 off the platform. Seven. Jenny taking Six, her second gold half. medal with 57.51 points. One. There's no way she can be caught. the Merry Tune, 45-year-old Rob Perella, when he took on 20-year-old Mark McMahon, the Hong Kong kid in the glamour event of the bowls, the men's singles. A gold medal we had never won before. It was one of three the Aussie team picked up. Perella needs two for gold. He played a forehand again. He wants the same weight as his last one, fractionally narrower because his weight was spot on. He's chasing it down. Doesn't want to be too narrow. That's his own bowl. He's turned it over. He's turned it in for shot. Superb bowling again from Rob Perella. Is he holding two shots at the moment, Perella? I don't believe so. You think it's one? Yep. Oh. No, that bowl out there, there at about one o'clock yeah. would be the second shot. He's been down and looked at the head. Mark McMahon, the 20-year-old, talented young bowler from Hong Kong with a future that, I don't know, I think it defies description of what he's got in front of him. Playing against one of the best bowlers in the world is Robbie Perella and still in it with a chance, although it looks grim. He's playing up through the head. Not badly played. He's got rid of it. Oh, what's the position now? She's a bit topsy-turvy now. Who's holding shot? And remember, Perella needs two to go for gold. What do you reckon there? Uh, is it Perella or is it McMahon? I'll say it's definitely McMahon's. Right. No doubt. This is Perella's last bowl for this end. Wants to win this end. Yep. He's going to drive at it. He's going to try and get rid of it. Let's oh, see there's what he plenty around Bobby White. There it is on its way. Oh, you! He's got, he's got two, but he's got left plenty of room there for uh, McMahon to get to the jack. Uh, Ian, Ooh, was that a wise drive. move? Well, I know he's left a lot of room. He's whacked that ball, which hits the shot ball. See, it's swipping out now. He was lucky to get rid of that, but he did. This is the most important ball of this young kid's life, if he can't draw close. Right. Short. Bobby Perella! Bobby Perella has won the goal! goal. What a fantastic effort, Rob Perella, the first ever Australian to win a gold medal in the bowl singles. Look at him there, no wonder he's happy. Ian Cleland waving out to him, he's waving to everybody. And so what it, they should be proud of. How about that mob down there at Kedron in Brisbane, in Queensland? And there's Rob P Perella throwing his cap amongst the crowd. <laughs> what a performance, what a performance, or he's shade. 
Inspired by the flamboyant Brisbane taxi driver, our men's pairs, Ian Schubach and Trevor Morris, face Canada for gold. And what a finish for the Australians. Just that little bit heavy. But that's about the best draw shot he's played. And he's made a couple of shots. Australia are two down. And be careful, they don't lose five or six in this end. They lost five or six, they only need another five or six in the next end of Canadians. And they could win with two sixes. Yeah. I'm just stating a fact. Yeah, how many have they got now? Two or three. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, would Trevor go for a drive? No. He stops, he got another one. No, he's gone too heavy. He's played three draw shots. What are they holding there now, do you reckon? At least two. There's Trevor coming up on the forehand, making sure that he tries to reach. He's underneath it. Good try, though. Yep. That was a really good try, that. A very difficult shot to play. Drawing again with his last bowl. What's he done with the jack? Oh, he sliced it towards his own, which wouldn't do any damage. Might have made three shots. I think he has. Oh, he's surrendered. They've surrendered. The game's all over. Australia have won the gold medal. That's the Shubeck family, Keith and Poole, all, look at the a ball, former man. great. And there they are, Ian Shubeck on the right. And we see Trevor Morris just get out. Here's and Trevor there. Very happy. A very happy Australian pair. They won the gold medal conventionally without having to play the last end. Then it was the turn of our women's fours. Daphne Shaw, Marion Stewart, Dorothy Roach and Audrey Rutherford took on the Kiwis. And what a battle it was at Pakaranga, with the two teams fighting it out to the last end. Coming in nicely, Audrey. Punch your own bowl up yeah, and be beauty. fantastic. Punch that in. Get past it and get close beauty, again. Beauty, Audrey. That's another one on the head. Now to Australia. The pressure is on Rhoda Ryan. Had to think there's only four more bowls to go, and with that close to goal, scores oh. dead level on Australia holding two. It's still anybody's game, it's a cliffhanger, but we're sitting in the box seat at the moment. And this is her second last bowl, and I've got the shivers. Oh, so have I. I've had them a long time now. Here it comes. How's it looking, Ian? It's looking all right. Her grass looks good, but what about her weight? I don't oh. think it's going to be here. She's running up now, though. She's not going to be here. Look at her teammates urging it on. It's a good bowl. Oh, what is it? We holding one or not? Doesn't matter. We're holding the shot. Yep. If you want to know, we're holding two. Well, I think it could be one for sure, but don't be greedy. We only want one to win it. We only want one, and we want our skip and our Dorothy Roach to get another one there to make sure of it. If this lady can bowl on her forehand and leave it three feet short, it would be an ideal bowl, a perfect blocker. She's got to have the grass and not to disturb the head. She's coming in nicely. Oh. She's going to put another one on the head. She's going to put another one on the head. A oh, beautiful bowl. Dorothy Roach, when it's <laughs> needed. Now. The pressure on Rhoda Ryan, because Australia have got three shots now around the head, and that's the most important thing. There is no target. Rhoda. There's the Australian. Playing an upshot. She's wide, but anything could happen with a wick. She's going to hit the ball. She's all over. Australia's Australia has won, won, won the gold. Australia has won the gold. What a beauty. A great effort. The skipper coming down to congratulate her teammates in Australia have created history this time. Three teams to win gold. Rob Perello, our pairs of Shubak and Trevor Morris, and now our ladies' fours. What a performance. What a performance by the ladies. Our shooters were also on target, producing Australia's best performance in Commonwealth Games competition with seven gold out of a total of 15 medals. And it was the laconic Forbes farmer, Phil Adams, who led the charge with a personal gold medal tally of three. Perth's Ben Sandstrom was also one of our big guns, winning two gold, including the individual air pistol, where he shot a world-class score. 
but the real satisfaction came in beating his pair's partner, Adams. I wanted to beat Phil Adams. <laughs> There's some satisfaction in that. It is because, in theory, I should have, I should have won the free pistol again. I'm a little bit um, stronger in that one, I feel. And I reckon he would be a little bit stronger in air than me. But since he took the free, I'll, I'll make sure I take the air. Other top performers were Colin Robinson in the individual running target and John Maxwell, who won the individual shotgun trench by just one point. I knew I had to hit 24 to win. And when I got to 23, I missed one and I thought I've got to hit one more. <laughs> if I never hit another one, I want to hit this one. <laughs> Did you think you could get the 24 before you started? I thought I was going to shoot 24. Yeah, I wanted to shoot 24. Yeah. <clears throat> disappointed that you didn't shoot the possible? Not now. <laughs> In gymnastics, the experts were surprised by our performance in Auckland. Australia was expected to fill the minor placings behind Canada and England. Monique Allen disproved them with this gold medal performance in the women's uneven bars. Handstand pirouette beautifully performed straight into the Tkachev, increasing the difficulties, maximising the bonus points. Giant. Pirouette in the handstand position again, into immediate double back, perfect <laughs> landing, great for a team. And it is a gold medal for Australia. The figures have gone through 9.875. Monique Allen, the Australian teenager, has a gold medal. For the men, Brennan Dowrick was our best performer, winning the pommel horse section. Now you can see that Brennan's very strong, he's working very clear of the horse, beautiful flares, spindling flares, increasing the complexity of the difficulty, travelling all the time. Brennan is tipped to win gold, all of us have our fingers crossed that this will occur. He's just 18 years of age, has just finished year 12 at school, he attained good scores, told me he'd be able to get into accountancy. Great routine from Brennan Dowrick. Brennan is very happy with it, and so was the crowd. You could hear squeals, screams of delight from the Australians in the audience. Well, have a look in the replay at this excellent technique. Look at these beautiful flares. And travelling the length of the horse as he does them. Just amazing. Going into the spindle. Plenty of height, excellent amplitude. Francis, I have a feeling that Brennan did it as well as he possibly could. Oh, he certainly did. And for Brennan Dowrick of Australia, it's a 9.825. While our weightlifters failed to live up to expectations, there were still some excellent efforts. In the 75 kilo class, Ron Laycock, a silver medalist in 1986, produced gold medal wins with this lift in the clean and jerk. 177.5. Paul becomes hushed. Biggest weight we've seen so far. It's on the shoulders. It's looking okay. Ronnie Laycock with 177.5. Here it goes. He's held it. 177.5. The Australian bring the feet together. We've got the lights. And he's back in business. That's the Ronnie Laycock we know. That's the Ronnie Gay Laycock we love. Well done, Ronnie Laycock. Ron Laycock was our only gold medalist at the Games, winning the clean and jerk and overall. His was a brave effort, but so too was super heavyweight Charlie Gazzarella. Big Charlie popped a shoulder that would have finished most men, but not Charlie. This is what you call courage in sport. A dislocated shoulder has been put back. Charlie has come out to get a total. Well done, Charlie Garzarella. The crowd have just been informed about it, and that is a mighty, mighty effort. Commentators are clapping in here from all around the Commonwealth. A fantastic effort from Charlie Garzarella, holding his arm there. They've popped the, the shoulder back, and Dean, that's a lot of courage. Yeah, to go out there and do that final attempt just to get a total, it takes a lot of guts because with a dislocated shoulder, it's a lot of pain. The boxing team went to Auckland with a ton of potential. And even though there were no gold medals, there were some stunning performances. Silver for the brilliant Justin Rousel, who will only get better. 
bronze for Spike Cheney, Stefan Scriggins and the very unlucky Jamie Nicholson. The point loss has been equal. Both boxers lost a point worn by the referee in the second round. Oh, Jamie doing the better scoring in this third round. Minute gone. He's got Irwin on the back foot. But Irwin's a tough nut. Don't you worry about Rick. that. Jamie doing the, the far cleaner scoring in this third oh, round. Oh, big right hand from Irwin. That was right on the button. Jamie Rick. didn't flinch. He took the punch well. Jamie working to the body. I don't know why he hasn't done it before when he's been up close. Johnny Lewis must have said to him, get in there, son, you've got to pick up your work rate. But Irwin moving well. He's ducking very well. Getting sloppy again. Jamie's got to really pull himself together. He's chasing oh, it, throwing it over the left hand. The judges have got to look at the aggression that Jamie Nicholson's using. Irwin really not doing a great deal, Bruce, in this round. He's on the back foot. Not countering too effectively. Jamie's got the, the better of it so far in this third round. He's got Irwin on his bike. A minute to go in and this semi-final. Irwin tiring, mate. He's looking up at the clock. Jamie Nicholson's got Nicholson sticks, got to stick the pressure right on him. It's not normally Jamie's go, but it's working. He's pushing keep, him. Keep punching Jamie Nicholson. Oh, oh, what, another point no, off. No. He didn't need that one. I think that may be Mr. Gagnon may have it. given the fight to John. He's, he'll do it. He'll oh, have it again. Boy. Oh, and no. another point goes off. I'll tell you what, though, Bruce. Jamie's going in and he's disqualified him. Oh, he's no. disqualified him. What yep. a tragedy for Jamie Nicholson. Disqualified. He's disqualified him. That's wrong because Jay, as Jamie was rushing in, Irwin would hang on to him and pull him onto him. That is a tragedy for Jamie Nicholson and to Australia. Johnny Lewis can't believe it either. No, I can't believe it. Yeah, Bo Gehring just having it, saying a few words in the corner there too. The referee, I cannot believe that. Poor Jamie Nicholson is He's in absolutely tears. heartbroken. Boxing's a tough game, but there was hardly a dry eye when an Irish boxer won gold. The tape with his country's national anthem failed, but not his countrymen. For the first time at the Commonwealth Games, judo was included and Australia enjoyed success, winning six bronze and three silver. Looks like this is going to be the fifth bronze medal for the Australian judo camp. They already have three silvers. This is going to be Australia's fifth bronze and Australia does it. Well done to Julie Reedon from Australia, out of Sydney. A mother of two and taking bronze here over the Kiwi girl with a hold down for the 30 second time limit.
45 degree bank corners, for others that track will be the venue for their greatest triumphs. Kurt Hunnett's been the enemy before we even got here, so I thought he'd be the um, one to beat. Um, I'm out there to kill him and he's out there to kill me. Well, it's going to be who's got the best weapon to kill the other one that's going to win. When we get on the bike, he's the enemy. I, I, I think that he's the man that will prevent, that has the ability to prevent me from achieving my goals and my dreams. And my mother or my father would be my enemy on the bike if they if I met them in the finals. The sprint cycle on the velodrome is pretty dangerous because um, you're going around there at top speeds, you're, you're exceeding 60, 70 kilometres an hour. I'm, I'm out there, I'm willing to lose skin in part of my tactics to win the race. When you prepare for a sprint, you gotta be thinking power, speed, uh, explosion. I tend to use spot words. I use words that create intensity, but at the same time remaining calm, you know, not getting too over anxious at, at the situation. Cycling can be lonely. Um, it also, also depends on what um, event you're competing in. My event, the sprint, uh, it's an individual event, and I tend to like to get away by myself a little bit and uh, mentally prepare myself. Canadian 11.47. I'm an individual. That's the reason why I do an individual sport. I don't think I'm a loner per se, but when we get on the bike, the person that is on the other side or up or down the track on you, not mine, is really. It's a killing game, really, sprinting. Um, take no, take no, or have no mercy on other people. And um, if you're not out there with a killing attitude, you're going to be killed yourself. When it came to the final of the men's 1,000 metre sprint between Harnett and Niwan, it was the Australian whose killer instincts proved stronger. Coming round to the bell this time, gradually rolling to more speed now. He's watching uh, Kurt Harnett, he's taking the lower part of the track. Kurt Harnett's going from again, Niwan, a little bit of a hook there to remind Harnett where he is. But now, as Harnett labours to get up to speed, Gary Niwan is like a thoroughbred. He's rolling round this track. What an easy title this has turned out to be. He's done it two rides to nil. Gary Niwan is the Commonwealth Games champion for the second year. He's emulated Kenrick Tucker of 78 and 82, John Nicholson of 70 and 74. He did it like he always said he would, Mike, as easy as pie. Aussie goal two in the 50-kilometre points race, a gruelling test of endurance and tactical skill. In the end, it was Australian Robert Burns who passed with flying green and gold colours. And just as New Zealand were looking to their third gold medal in the cycling here in the Games, it has been wiped away by two superb performances by the young Australian kids. They have ridden like men of veteran status. Now Lucas has had to drag out Connell. He's got to pick up these two riders. It's about one and a half laps to go, and Burns is trying to tag on two. This is a do-or-die effort. One lap to go, trying to drag Craig Connell for the ten points that would give him the gold medal for New Zealand. But I don't know whether they're going to get on. They are about 30 metres behind the two escapees. And Aikens has come on the scene now. Burns is on the upper of these three. Burns is coming round for the gold medal. They won't pick him up. Bernard Burns even... Uh, Robbie Burns even beats Craig Connell on the line. 
The gold medal has gone to Fantastic. Australia. The rider who finished fourth in the Olympic Games is now the Commonwealth Games champion. The women's road race was one of the toughest events in these games and toughest competitor of them all, Australia's Cathy Watt. This is going to be a great sprint, but it's going to be a Canadian maybe on the line. We're very tight. Is it Cathy Watt is going to hit the line first? It's going to be a very, very close sprint. Cathy Watt's going to get this for Australia. She's one ahead of everybody. There's nobody going to touch her. Revenge is sweet in the Commonwealth Games for Cathy Watt. She had the silver medal. She lost it by 0.11 of a second. But not this time. She's got the gold medal now for Australia. But perhaps our greatest cycling victory of these games came in the men's 1,000 metre time trial, courtesy of Martin Binnicombe's mighty thighs. Marvellous, 46.731, and that's the best time by almost half a second. Martin Binnicombe is making this gold medal look a formality. As the crowd are now out of the seats here, they're watching a Commonwealth Games record ride. He'll be inside a 1.6, and it might be even better than that. 1.5.572, the gold medal goes to Australia. And if ever I've had to commentate on a certainty of my life, tonight was the night. Remington Shongwei, the only competitor in heat one of the 200 metres men's best breaststroke. His other two opponents scratched from the event and he seems certain to win. The crowd loving every moment of it. The young 16-year-old from Swaziland coming on down. Eight officials stretched across the, the pool waiting <laughs> to officially declare their lane as being above board. Only one of them really working because Remington Shongwei is going through one of the magic moments of the Commonwealth Games of 1990. There he goes. God bless you, boy. 310.67. And the crowd giving him a true Commonwealth Games reception. He had everybody on his side. It's the first time I've been to a sporting event where everybody was cheering for the same team or person. And the winner is... Remington Shongwei. Remington Shongwei of Swaziland. For me, one of the unforgettable images of these Commonwealth Games. It didn't matter that he had to swim a heat all by himself. It didn't matter that he had no chance whatsoever of qualifying. He was out there competing. He was having a go. Competition, that's what it's all about. And it characterised a great Australian performance here. An athlete the selectors wanted to leave behind. I'm talking, of course, about our great heptathlon champion, Jay. Well, supposedly my best event, the one that I'm um, be ranked the highest in out of any of my seven events. And it's an event where it's, if you wreck one thing, then the whole race could be wrecked. So there's a lot of pressure on me. And, and beforehand, I get so nervous that I have pins and needles running up to about my elbows. And, and I have to sometimes just check that my hands will still hold my weight on the block. So, and afterwards, I just breathe a huge sigh of relief and go, oh, thank God that's over. But it's Jane Fleming. She's going to take the first seat. And look at the time, 13.19. A great start for Jane Fleming there in the 100 hurdles in the heptathlon. The high jump involves more mental skill than any other event. And, and that's where I think my strength lies in the way I handle things mentally. And um, I guess high jump is good too because you always get three attempts. So if you stuff up one, then you get another go. And um, oh, I don't know, high jump gives me a real buzz. It's almost like you're flying. And it's good fun to land on bags. It's like you're a little kid, like when you jump on your parents' um, mattress. <laughs> 
No, I, I really like high jump. It's good. The 200, in comparison to all my heptathlon events, the 200 is an, is an event where I pick up a lot of points on everyone because my main asset in, as an athlete and as a heptathlete is my speed. And my 200, I should almost be able to beat the rest of the field by a full second, which is worth a lot of points to me. So again, it's something that I really need to capitalise on. And because I am a powerful, explosive athlete, it's the kind of event that I do excel in. And so I have to make sure that I do excel in it and don't slacken off just because I'm winning the race. I've got to make sure I push all the way to the finish. I don't fear pain because it's, I'm, it's just something that I've accepted as an athlete, and I guess most athletes do, um, particularly perhaps marathon runners or distance runners, when their event doesn't involve pain, that you know it's going to hurt, but the result in the end is really, I mean, if you've run well, then it's almost like you forget the pain. I guess it's almost, I've never had a baby, but it's what people say about having babies, you know, the result at the end makes you forget about the pain. The shot put is, is an event I've always had problems with, but, and I guess my stature is not really suited to the shot put, um, but I'm really, I've worked on it really hard in the last five years. I've, I moved to the Institute four and a half years ago, and ever since then I've worked on it really hard, and so, I'm hoping that once I'm in the competition that I, I throw, you know, over 13.50 and maybe over 14 metres. And if I do that, I'll be really happy because it'll just be a solid performance. And then it will mean I'm, it's not an event that I'm losing points in, whereas it used to be just an absolute disgrace. <laughs> Javelin is a, is a really great event for me too because if you flight the javelin well, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite an amazing thing to watch it quiver through the air and then land. And as it lands into the ground, if you've thrown it correctly, then it just sort of shakes in the ground and it sort of, then, then you sort of think, all right, I've done it. And it's really good then. I remember vi really vividly the long jump was something in Edinburgh that um, that I did very. I jumped a personal best, but all I remember thinking was I was on the run up in my third jump, and the ju the competition had actually gone. Um, you know, every the top three competitors, every first time they jumped, it went a little bit further. And I remember being on the run up on my last jump, and I was just I heard all these Aussies just yelling for me, and they were using my name and stuff, and you could see the flags. And I was on the run up, and I was just so determined to run as fast as I could down that run up and jump further than anyone else. And I took off and I landed in the pit and I looked back and I thought I'd failed the jump and I was going, oh my God, I've messed it up sort of thing. And I turned around and I hadn't messed it and I jumped the personal best and it was just a great feeling. I guess I'm quite strange as an athlete because I never ever know what I see. On my, I don't use my eyes as for cues in anything, in any of my seven events, and if I do, I tend to stuff things up. It's, I'm a real, um, I'm an automatic athlete, and I feel things more than see things. So, the only thing I see at the end of my race is the scoreboard and how fast I've run, <laughs> or how slow I've run. Hopefully, in this case, it'll be how fast. When the track and field events began here in Auckland, everybody was talking about the Kenyans. So the predictions the were that they would win every train. man's race between the 800 and 10,000 metres and probably the marathon. Well, by day nine, they'd won the 800 metres and they'd won the marathon. And with John Ngugi and two other Kenyans in the 5,000 metres, they were expected to clean up there. But a magnificent race by Andrew Lloyd saw him come from nowhere to take the gold. Over at the... 200 meter mark for the start of this 5,000 meters. It includes the fastest man in the world in 1989, Yobish Ondieki, and the Olympic champion at this distance, John Ngugi, both from Kenya, of course. There are three Australians in the field, Malcolm Norwood, uh, Andrew Lloyd, and 
Pat Carroll, the three Australian representatives. But the main challenge may well come from the English runners, including the man in the foreground, that's Jack Buckner, number 337, and Mark Rowland, number 396. A withdrawal from this event is the winner of the 10,000 metres, Eamon Martin, who has a virus, the third Englishman. He has a virus and uh, he is not taking his place in the field. And it's the New Zealander Kerry Roger who goes straight to the lead from uh, Andrew Lloyd from Australia and uh, then back to Pat Carroll. And at number 396 is Mark Rowland, the English champion at this distance. And in the early stages, the three Kenyans, Ondieki, Tanui, and uh, Moses, uh, Ondieki, Tanui, John and Ngugi, uh, back towards the middle of the field. Gee. Roger's taking them out fairly quickly, Steve Monaghetti. Yes, and no one's going with him. The, the Kenyans are certainly very cagey sitting at the back, but wait for it. Something would happen very shortly. How do you expect this race to unfold? I think John Ngugi's going to break the field up by putting a, a solid lap in, probably in the middle stages. But uh, without Eamon Martin, that could, could change the, the face of the race a little bit. So Kerry Roger, number 807, the New Zealander, is leading this 5,000-metre field. He set a New Zealand national record in Auckland a fortnight ago and appeared to be running in very good form, uh, but his performance in the 10,000 metres was perhaps a little bit disappointing. So now he's being wheeled in initially by Pat Carroll from Australia. He's number 42. Andrew Lloyd is still there. And uh, Roland on the inside. And now Jovish Ondieki starting to move up, and he's in fifth place, followed on the outside by Ngugi. I think the best way to try and distinguish these Kenyans is to tell you that Ondieki has the red shoes, Ngugi has the yellow shoes, and Moses Tanui has no shoes. <laughs> now this is Kerry Roger, the New Zealander, and he still leads the 5,000 metres field from... Carroll of Australia, Lloyd of Australia, Roland of England. And uh, I'm just looking for Malcolm Norwood, who at this stage, the third Australian, is back towards the rear of the field, although he's starting to... Oh, and there's a oh. fall. There's an interesting fall, and it's involved one of the Kenyans and... Uh, Jack Buckner. And Jack Buckner, yeah. it's John Ngugi, the Olympic champion that fell. Well, that really is going to throw this race wide open now. And uh, it's Ngugi who's really starting to run hard at the back of the field, trying to make up the ground that he lost. What a tragedy for the Olympic champion, John Ngugi, who fell. And it's left Kerry Roger out in front from Carroll, Lloyd and Roland. And Ondieki is the best place to the Kenyans. Here's a replay of it, Steve. Let's have another look. And uh, down, oh, goes, down goes Ngugi and he takes Buckner down with him. Two of the fancies in the event. Yeah, and look at him still charging back up already. This is unbelievable. Look at this. Well, there's a oh. spirited sprint from the Olympic champion, and oh. he will now have the sympathy of this huge crowd at Mount Smart. Oh. There is no question about that. And within a lap, he's gone into the lead. And he said, well, if that's what's going to happen to me, you can earn the gold medal. And Googie's recovery was nothing short of amazing. He was like a man possessed and was one of the reasons this race will be long remembered. Then came the next sensation, teammate Yobes Ondieki, a lap later, also took a tumble. That ruined his chances. Certainly Ngugi appeared unbeatable with a lap to go. Andrew Lloyd looked a long shot for the bronze, but this race's amazing story wasn't over yet. And the Olympic champion leads this 5,000 metre field through. This will be one of the most remarkable victories in Commonwealth Games history, if he can pull it off. After him goes Roland. In there also is Andrew Lloyd, who's well placed to win a medal. Kerry yeah. Roger is there from New Zealand. This is great. Andrew Lloyd, as I know, has got a lot of speed. These guys are quick 1,500 metre runners, but Lloyd is there with a real chance. Hamer's there from Wales, Roger from New Zealand, and now Tanui breaks away from that bunch, and Hamer goes with him. Hamer, in fact, Lloyd. has passed Tanui. Lloyd's going also, and they're closing rapidly on the race leader, John Ngugi. It's Ngugi. Lloyd is running brilliantly. Hamer is in second place. Lloyd is third. Ngugi is tiring badly. 
three. Oh. And Googie has a look around. The gap is narrowed to about six Lloyd or seven metres. Lloyd takes off after Hamer and passes him. And now Andrew Lee, Lloyd takes off after the Olympic Andrew champion. Lloyd. Lloyd is bearing down on top of Ngugi. And Googie digs deep, Andrew but he's got Lloyd. no more. And Andrew Lloyd wins oh. the gold medal for Australia. Andrew Lloyd, whose performances in major events has been questioned previously, has stolen the 5,000 metres from the Olympic champion, John Ngugi. The bronze medal has gone to Ian Hamer of Wales. What a sensational performance from Andrew Lloyd. Unbelievable. He is the winner of the 5,000 metres gold medal. While that was an upset of enormous proportions, not so Darren Clark's 400 win. But at two previous games, he had been highly fancied. His tremendous promise had yet to be fulfilled. They're away cleanly. Mwanzia from Kenya leads them out in lane nine and Devon Morris is going very quickly also. So too is Bennett. And De Clark is moving very comfortably off that first bend. He ran a beautiful bend and he's got Kip Kemboy covered as they go down the back. Now Kip Kemboy starts to apply some pressure. Bennett is back there. So too is Kitur of Kenya who's running very well. Garner's going well also. So too is Stone in lane one. The three Australians are quitting themselves well. It's Clark now who starts to move up alongside the uh, Kenyan Kip Kemboy. Clark will lead them in to the straight. Kip Kenboy is with them. Kitur is coming through. Darren Clark has got this field under control, I suspect. Kip Kenboy is coming at him, but he can't sustain it. Darren Clark came to Auckland on business, and that business is completed. Darren Clark wins the 400 metres. A magnificent run in a time of 44.6 seconds. That's a new games record. A magnificent run by Darren Clark, and the monkey is off his back. Now to the speed merchants. The 100 metres men's final featured the great Englishman Linford Christie. He was the hot favourite. But it was also a big moment for young Aussie Tim Jackson. Gee, they do hold them a long time, but they got them away, and Christie exerts his authority immediately. Surin is running very well alongside him, but Christie's got the field beaten. It says in, we're coming through closely for second, but a brilliant run, and it's sub 10 seconds. In fact, it's almost a world record to Linford Christie. He has run a staggering 9.93 seconds, one one hundredth outside the world record. What a sensational run by Linford Christie. In the 200 metre sprint, England had the top contenders, John Regis and Marcus Adam. Australia had a teenager named Paul Green. He was already over the moon just by making the final. Got a clean start first away. And it's a Zinwa who's got away very quickly, but so too has Adam. Adam has gone up alongside Regis. Maffey's running well also. It's going to be the three Englishmen that lead into the straight. Hello to Tang as Zinwa's running a very good race. It's Adam who comes down in front of Regis. Adam is going to cause a major upset. Adams leads Regis, and Adam has won. Marcus Adam has won the 200 metres. What a boil over. Marcus Adam from England has won the 200 metres. And he's won it in the very fast time of 20.10 seconds. Merlin Otty looked unbeatable in the women's 100 metre sprint. The great Jamaican wore the appearance of someone who owned the race before it was over. But 27-year-old Kerry Johnson from Queensland had form on the board that had to be treated with respect. And Dunn got away very, very well. So too did Davis. Oddie's running fast. So too is Johnson. Johnson running very fast, as is Douglas in lane nine. Oddie's got the field beaten. Johnson's running brilliantly. It's close, but Johnson's got second. Oddie, a convincing winner in a very, very fast 11.02. A great run by Merlene Oddie, but a great run also by Kerry Johnson. And I would think that she's probably lowered her national record yet again. It was to be the same result in the 200 final. Merlin left the games with the sprint double. And Oddie got a very good start. So too did Short, but Oddie swallowed them up very quickly. She's going fast on the inside. Johnson's run a very good bend also. It's Oddie and Johnson, and out wide it's Davis. Right out wide is done, but it's, uh, it's uh, Johnson who leads them into the straight. Now Oddie gets on terms with her and goes past her. Oddie is leading them down the straight. Johnson is running second, coming through as stout, but a good run by Merlene Oddie, and she's won the final of the 200 metres just in front of Kerry Johnson of Australia. So a very good Commonwealth Games for Kerry Johnson. The women's 10 kilometre walk ended up a stroll for the outgoing world champion Kerry Saxby. While six other girls had to be taken to hospital for exhaustion after the race, Kerry was full of beans.
Just under 45 or about. It was just as one-sided in the women's marathon with Lisa Martin in a class of her own. I think one of the interesting aspects of this race, you can just see Lisa Martin uh, going out in front. And before I talk about what I was going to talk about, Steve, would you expect her to go out hard? She did in 1986. I, I really think so. Psychologically, she's going to destroy this field if she goes out and runs her own race. And, and you, you, basically, she runs a lot by herself anyway, so she's used to being out there. I'm sure she's prepared that way, so I think that's how it's going to be. You can see the gap, yeah, they're speeding up now. It's a, a huge gap at this really early stage. That's incredible, isn't it? My word, it really, it's going to be like a training run for her. I mean, she'll obviously go out as hard as she can. Yes. Uh, but uh, she's going to have to do it all on her own. Lisa won the marathon by almost eight minutes. But it was a Canadian-born Aussie, Tani Ruckel, finishing second, who won our hearts because of her big heart and even bigger smile. Uh, Tani Ruckel is going to go through and claim the silver medal, giving Australia gold and silver in the women's marathon. A fabulous moment for Tani Ruckel as she finishes second to the great Lisa Martin and collapses in relief. That's magnificent. What a tremendous performance and really caps off what's been a great day for Australia. Tani, a fabulous run. Congratulations. Thank you. I was just so happy. I, I it was a flat on my back two days ago with a back injury, and we didn't know whether I'd be able to run until I had a jog this morning at 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm just so happy I can't begin to tell you. The men's marathon boasted a world-class field. Robert Di Costello was chasing his third consecutive gold medal, but the competition was going to be tough. Fellow Aussie Steve Monaghetti was one favourite, along with Kenyan Douglas Wakahiri and Tanzanian Yuma Akanga. Uh, the Africans take it out and uh, set quite a hot pace, getting down to around about two minutes seven. But then as they reel back in, they slow it down and they reel back in and it goes out to about a two nine pace. So the pace really is fluctuating at the moment and uh, they're just starting to close up some of those gaps. You just saw Dika Stella, but uh, still Akanga out in front uh, with Hal. It soon became evident that Deke's dream of a third goal was to be just that. But his big heart refused to throw in the towel. You can see there just that little gap broken up between Deke Costello, but he's working hard at this point of the race to try and maintain contact. Once he loses contact, it makes it very difficult. But if he can maintain focus on the backs of the other runners, he'll be able to hopefully pull up to that leading pack and then get a little bit of a wrist, a bit the same as cyclers. They're able to um, hop in, slipstream slightly, and I think the Deke is still now trying to make a move to maintain contact with that leading group. In the closing stages, it was a two-man race. Steve Monaghetti and his great rival, Douglas Wakahiri. Both were playing cat and mouse. The signs are ominous for Steve Monaghetti as Wakahiri starts to uh, exert some pressure. He has started to open up a little break, just a suspicion of a break here developing between Wakahiri and uh, Steve Monaghetti. And uh, it's up to Monaghetti now to see if he can respond. Monaghetti being fairly gallant, though, he's hanging in there. And uh, Wakahuri looking around past his shoulders. Come on, Moniz, don't turn that's, around. That's, that's a, bad a bad sign. That's a bad sign, yes. He's starting, I think, to run for second. And uh, he should still be thinking of running for first. And then second will take care of itself. If he can just go with Wakahuri, I don't think Harley is going to catch him. He's got the silver medal in his keeping. But uh, if... If uh, Monaghetti shouldn't be worrying about that at the moment, although it's very easy sitting back here to say that, but Wakahuri now is starting to show his class. And uh, he's running into St Helia's, coming down towards the finishing line, and it would seem that Wakahuri has done enough. And here comes a spurt now from Harley, so Monaghetti needs to get out and chase Wakahuri as hard as he can. We're down the last uh, couple of hundred metres, that's it. Well, this is Douglas Wakahuri, the great Kenyan, who lives and trains in Japan. And he went there some years ago to, cha to train under the great Nakamura, who passed away in 1988. But uh, with that tutelage, he's come through, and uh, he is proving himself to be one of the finest marathon runners in the world. Silver medalist in the World Championships in 1987, silver medalist in the Olympic Games in 1988, and he's blown Steve Monaghetti away in the concluding stages of the Commonwealth Games Marathon here in Auckland. A big performance from Douglas Wakahuri. Remember, this sprint is at the end of 42 kilometres. They've been running about 20 miles an hour, 20 k's an hour. And this, look at this sprint. 
and he's starting to look a lot more relaxed about it now. He knows that he has the gold medal as he comes down to the finish line. Douglas Wakahuri of Kenya goes through to win the gold medal in the Commonwealth Games Marathon in a time of 2 hours, 10 minutes and 26 seconds. And Steve Monaghetti of Australia has run a very brave race to take the silver medal just in front of Simon Harley from Tanzania. In the women's discus, Lisa Marie Visionari came to the Games a hot favourite. The form guide was spot on. The 18-year-old student blew the opposition away. And it's a good one. The surprise result for Australia in track and field came on the last day. It was in the women's 4 by 100 metres relay. Away they go in the women's 4x100 metres relay, and it's a good start this time. Douglas from England got away very well, but Dunstan from Australia appears to be holding her ground. Let's see who makes the first change. It was a good change by the Australians, a good change also by England. Cathy Sambell is off out after the uh, the English girl. The uh, the New Zealanders are running very well out wide, so too are the Nigerians. As Sambell gives it to Freeman, not a good change, a slow change. And the English girls have assumed control of this race now, but New Zealand's still doing very well. It's going to be Bev Peterson will bring the New Zealanders home. Paula Dunn will change for England. She went very early, only just got the bat and a bad change. Kerry Johnson made a brilliant change and Johnson storms down the straight. A brilliant performance by Kerry Johnson and she's won the gold medal for Australia. A brilliant last leg by Kerry Johnson. Cathy Freeman got the baton away cleanly to Kerry Johnson and Monique Dunstan, the lead-off runner, comes back to congratulate her. Oh, they came from a long way back, the Australian girls, and Kerry Johnson has earned that gold medal. It wasn't as cut and dried for 22-year-old six-foot-six Sean Carlin in the hammer. He left his best to the very last. He had just one more opportunity to nail the gold. He can do it, oh! but he has let it go. Oh, look at Carlin has That's come go through. Go. Unbelievable stuff from Sean Carlin. As the records tumbled, there was a new milestone within minutes of each other. Simon Arkell brought up our 40... Australia's Supergirl Jane Fleming with it all to do. She just seen her lead disappear. 665 to beat her best, 663 on the runway now. Jane is strong and hard and fast. Tremendous final round performance from Fleming, the gold medalist in the heptathlon. We'll wait for the measurement, but she knows she's done it. She feels so strong and so good about it. And what a magnificent performance. Look at Fleming, determined to the board. Off, extends as far as you can and around, and that's a big, big jump from Jane Fleming. And the winner is... All of a sudden, the noise from the crowd lifts the roof as you hear your name. You've won. You are the Commonwealth Games champion. Cameras advance as you are pulled out of the crowd to receive your medal. You march up to the dais as flags wave madly around you, people calling your name, chanting it as if it contains magic. You arrive at the dais and stand behind that big number one. And look at this smile. You hear your name called as the crowd reaches a frenzy and you wonder how you can possibly climb up onto that huge platform. It weighs heavy. Then you turn to watch your flag rise as the national anthem is played. 
for you. This is the most special song you have ever heard in your life. The bubble in your throat threatens to cut off your air supply as you mouth the words to the anthem. You think how very beautiful our flag is. And this flag is for you. A champion amongst a team of champions, Jenny Donnett with her gold, one of three in the diving. 35 years earlier, her mother had won gold in the same event. The games are over, but the images are stored forever. just thrilling. It's a great feeling. There were some unexpected wins and it was just incredible. I was proud to represent my country and um, 
a lot of satisfaction for all the work.